Chapter 30 The words of Agur, the son of Jekah, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Eucal. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? <clears throat> what is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse leech has two daughters, crying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave, and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey thy, his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of a sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There are four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prefer, prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold of her hands, and is, is in king's palaces. There are three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and he goat also, and a king, against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. We have no idea who Agur is, <laughs> no idea who Ithiel is, and no idea of who Ukal is. They have no idea where this man lived. We just know that this chapter was inserted in here, and some of it just doesn't seem really as appropriate as the others do. But the thought is, there is some thought that he was a non-Israelite, a collector of Proverbs, and that he lived someplace between Jerusalem and Babylon. And that these came to be part of this so that they could set up various Proverbs which could then be shot down later on in other scriptures. It's an interesting way of looking at it. But again, we have no idea who he is. There's, he's not written of any place else. So we have nothing in any way, shape, or form that tells us anything about this man. 
Verse 3, I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Always a great way to start off with something in scripture, right? And then he's basically, uh, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So he's saying good things here. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And then he goes into lists of things. Two things, three things, four things. These are a literary device where he can list off things that he likes, things that he doesn't like, things that need to be done. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. And then he has, you know, Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he... The servant curse thee, and thou be found guilty. Then there are, is a generation that curses. Now, there's, there is there is very often if you have large families, there will be one or two people in that generation that will curse their father and will not bless their mother. Um, and he goes through chapter eleven, chapter twelve, chapter thirteen, chapter fourteen, and the horse leech. Uh, if that's what I'm thinking of, is is a very large sized leech and has two daughters crying, give, give. And basically, a leech just sucks blood. That's all it does. And then we go into the literary device of the threes and the fours. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. Well, four things that say I have enough are, four things that do not say I have enough are, the grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and fire that saith not it is enough. None of those things ever have enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick out that eye, and the young eagle shall eat it. Basically saying, you know, you'll, you're going to have trouble because of that. Obviously it doesn't, it's not talking about the eagle, the um, ravens going to pick out the eye, the ravens are going to feed on, and that basically those things which are feasting on leftovers, those people are going to feed on the leftovers of the life of the individual who would not pay attention to the things of his father and mother. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, he doesn't know how to fly. The way of a serpent on the rock, okay. the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with the maid. He doesn't know any of those things. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Oh yes. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. A servant when he reigneth. Okay, Servants aren't supposed to reign. They don't know how. And a fool, when he is filled with meat, he thinks he's rich and wonderful. An odious woman, when she is married, oh, don't want to have that. Don't want to be that. And handmaid that is heir to her mistress. In other words, as in the case of Rachel, who had her handmaid given to Abraham so that she could have children, she became very, very haughty and very abusive to Rachel. Don't want to have that happen. There are four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies, which are a, a sort of something resembling a rabbit that live up in the mountains in the rocks. They uh, weigh maybe eight to ten pounds each. They are feeble folk, but they make their houses in the rocks, big rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they all go forth in bands, and the spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. And they go through three and four other things here. And verse 33, I really love this one. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter. We've had milk and cream, and had a dairy cow, and made our own butter. And the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. If you twist your nose enough, you can. So the bringing forth of wrath, so doing whatever you can to get people upset bringeth forth strife. Try to avoid forcing wrath on anybody, and you'll, you'll have less strife yourself. 